UNSC report to Office of Naval Intelligence, 2471. The war proceeds accordingly. Estimations of a 90% Sankiri restoration are encouraging. With our new juggernaut, now called Thanatos class, launched, our naval superiority is unrivaled, even if the Ungoy still boast an economic advantage. Work on reverse engineering installation 04's firing mechanism has also proceeded as instructed, and the scaled down version should soon be ready for fitting on the UNSC Athens, first of her name and class. End report. We going? Yes we are! Hi guys, Tom from Project T here, and welcome back to Stellaris Responsibilities Mantle. Sorry for that false start, because... Stellaris has crashed twice, OBS has crashed once, it's been a hell of a time trying to get this started. This is my second time recording this intro, because... Fuck my life. My computer does not want to, uh... Cooperate with me today. Oh boy. But yeah, welcome back. Anyway, it, it's been a time. Uh, last time, we were sticking it to the Gekulo colonies quite thoroughly. We started, as I said in the last intro, down here. Made our way all the way up, a path of devastation to Sanghidi territory. What will soon be Sanghidi territory once again. Because if you remember all the way back to in the early days of the series, this, was, uh, this belonged to the elites. And soon it shall once more, once this war has ended, because, you know, we've taken most of their territory, a couple of their planets, with the exception of Sanghelios, because, you know, the sovereignty and the confederation exist. And we managed to retake Sanghelios worlds that had been nicked by the Megekolo during the, this current war. We're just finishing up the last of these here. Uh, our Marine Corps are currently taking Voldop, and then... Sosta will be next, though, looks like the Banished have that well in hand. And our clan's battle group is down here now, cleaning up a lot of their systems that are currently not occupied. Which should end the war, because the foreigners are already long done. More importantly, the UNSC Reclamation, our Titan, has been constructed, and I have been reliably informed that this is the Thanatos class of starship, according to Halo fan and lore. Yeah, I'll be calling it the Punic, because I didn't know what class this was, even though I knew it wasn't the Punic. The Punic's not in this game. Uh, it seems a bit bigger than it should be. I think it's like double the size of the Infinity in the, this mod, but <laughs> who am I to complain? It's a fucking badass design. So I'll be... Modifying that in the ship editor soon enough, making sure it's called the Thanatos and not the Punic. You know, just make sure everything is as it should be. Technology wise, four months we get 5% shield hit points, just our basic buff gets our fleet power up. Then in another 36 months we'll get plus 30 naval capacity so we can further increase our fleet sizes. And then in 24 months, we get the Colossus Project, which we're going to need to create a new shipyard for, but we are well ahead on that. Anchor 5, our perfect, perfect candidate. In terms of the Federation, we are halfway to max level, and the Galactic Unity. Ban organic slave trade, for the first time in a long time, is on the table, and in the next 165 days we should, should get it, barring any particular grunty bastards switching sides at the last moment. I called in a lot of favours with them, so they shouldn't. I'll be very mad if they do, but we should be fine on that front, so right now we are going to be taking the last of the Megekolo Hunter territory and this war, and that should, should be the last war until the floods show up. And if it's not, I'm going to be very displeased with my Federation members for being stupid bastards. <sighs> but once this war is over, assuming there's no more war and conflict, we can just have the next few episodes leisurely building up our fleet, and then delving into the Eldritch Horror that are the Flood. Fun! And right where we left them, our clan's battle group are heading straight in, dealing with this station that's been on hiatus for a week. There she pops 
Ooh. And more. Sankili territory to boot. Alright, head up to these couple of systems. How's our invasion force going? They're down to two. We've got Spartans, Rockets, Grizzly, Spartan Threes, Gorse, Cyclops. It's all going rather handily. Eh, not for long. Labor market. Enemy planet secured. Very, very good. Are you going in to land? Oh, the why did you send your transport fleet in before? Before? But guys, you sent your transport fleet in and then his escort fleet was left behind. You know, the brutes aren't the brightest bulbs in the shed, but come on. Huh, would you look at that? It seems an old, an old Half destroyed fleet has turned up at tea. Uh, good luck, lads. Oh, looks like we're about to have a bit of a space battle over here as well. So the fleet seems to be a bit outmatched, and the station is damaged, so it can't provide support. Though it is only two battleships. It is only two battleships. So we'll see how this goes. Ah, they're just. Carrying through them. Stronger. Alright, Zark Clans, Battle Group. Alright, start heading up there and we'll deal with the fleet ourselves. If the Expeditionary Force, their main banished fleet here, it doesn't do it themselves. It's quite a pretty looking fleet, I will give them that. Yes, founder as a slave species on the market. I am well, unfortunately, aware. Marine Corps, how are you doing? Are you actually turning? No, you're not turning around yet. Gordon Bennett, black people. Yeah, quite cop it, do ya? Knowledge is the key to the universe. Oh, is that our shield harmonics? Yes, yes it is. So we're gonna get energy credits, so we're doing alright on that for now. We're doing alright on everything resource-wise. Anything else a particular want? Uh not particularly. Energy credits, it is then. Alright, we're on the last few days, ten days, come on. I'm keeping a very close eye on this. Four, three, two, one. Hallelujah! Slavery has been banned. It's about damn time, no more of these fucking pop-ups. Slave market. Should be non-existent very soon, lest people were uh, in breach of certain laws. Likewise, oh, <laughs> seems the uh, the banished beat us to that little punch. Retaliatory strike coming in. Engaging hostile forces. This was not not Hunter's day, was it? Down they go. Alright, Zarklands, where do you want to go next? What do we have on the go? Uh, nothing. All systems taken. At least in space. Alright, turn around then. And deal with the banished little snafu up here. Because for God's sake, incompetent little monkeys. Meanwhile, we're taking another one of their planets. You see all these fleets moving in, all the ships. Ah, we are just mobilizing left, right, Enemy and center. Secured. Easy. What do we have next on the list? We have this planet right here. What's its defenses like? 208. We've got a, a 300 coming in. They're entering orbit of. Oh, we'll head in to give them some support, nevertheless, after that. Has this planet been taken? No, they have not. So just go through one after the other. This one has been taken by the Yanmi. Oh, and a tradition. How about that? So we've got this system here, this system here, and retake the Sankey one. I think that's pretty much it. Minus 28. They are about to fail. 
Uh, what do we want? Leader experience and leader level cap. Sure, we'll go for that one there. Um, and uh, another fleet has just turned up, half dead. Heading towards home. Alas, I guess they didn't get the memo. As they fly through the debris field of the last fleet to try this. Kind of tragic in a way. But alas, there they go. Annihilated. Here we go, another invasion on the go. We're just backing up these guys. Very good, that's another planet taken, that puts them to... Yep, Achieve War Golds is about to happen any second. At least it should. Just to make sure they get the message. Oh, here we go. I think it's happening. Yes, there we go. The war is, at long last, over. And here's the Swords of San Helios. Most of their territory officially and finally retaken. From this little blob up here to all of this, they've retaken the planet of Lithia. For the first time in about 200 years. Short of San Helios, they are back to their former strength. They should be able to start building up better star fleets and such. They've got a bit of territory down here and a couple of worlds on top of that. Plus a wormhole connecting them up straight up there so they don't get any debuffs as far as that is concerned. So, yeah, we took a couple of systems, just, you know, some extra resources. They had an ally there. Uh, the Gekolo have been reduced to this blob there, and yeah, they've lost a fair chunk of their territory in all of this. And that ends our little war. That long bloody last. Uh, now I'm gonna withdraw my ships, though, 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 I think I'm going to keep Zar clans around for now, because... There are certain things still out and about. Things that need dealing with. And we have ourselves another gateway constructor site at the ready. We just hop in over here. Gateway construction underway. The elusive Carcosa. Our investigation on Madrigal did not yield any results, however there have been some odd reports from Onyx. Several colonists have claimed to have spotted a mysterious creature that they said matches our summary of the notes of the elusive Carcosa. But when we compare their reports to these notes, none of these seem to match either appearance or behaviour. Though Onyx's scientific director swears that he double-checked with each sighting himself, the only possible conclusion is to be oversight from all personnel involved. Oh dear. And here we go, Colossus Project completed. The Colossus Project, the monumental task designed, designing the biggest weapon platform in Unity history, and the Neutron Suite to arm it with, has yielded results and drawn to a close. The Neutron Sweep. And here she is. What will be the Athens class cruiser, which is, only has one weapon and that's the Neutron Sweep. Coming out of the big, bloody front of it. And yes, I renamed our Juggernaut the Thanatos. Just to make sure. Regenerating Molluscoid. We've been receiving word of a new species of Molluscoid living on Earth. If reported to be to believed, the animal is several feet long, aquatic in nature, and has the ability to heal minor injuries. Though many colonists are ardent in their claims that the animal exists, conclusive proof is yet to be found. On Earth, huh? Interesting. Oh god damn it. <laughs> Apparently they now want to declare war on the United Rebel Front as well. <sighs> well, fortunately, uh, looking at them, I mean their biggest fleet is 2,120 as far as I can see. So, uh, sure, I'll leave you to it, but if you want to do it, 
do it, I guess. Seems they're getting busy. They're sending in their own little leviathan. And annihilating... The UNSC, where are they to be found? Apparently they had a... I assume that's a... Yeah. An orbital habitat. Never seen the UNSC designed orbital habitat before. Interesting. Anyway, regener regenerating molluscoid. A new fantastical manner of beast seems to have been found on Gauss of Hosk. Though the description of it matched the ones coming from Earth, scientists are hesitant to declare it the same animal. It seems unlikely, if not downright impossible, for it to have appeared or evolved on both planets at the same time. A significant difference between the two seems to be the way this new species is allegedly able to harness huge amounts of bioelectricity with which it uses to hunt down its prey. Many of our people doubt it even exists at all due to the lack of evidence and discrepancies between the various eyewitness testimonies. Huh. So, it's appearing on multiple planets now, I guess. Interesting. Hello? You, you are a fraternity. They've made their own Infinity Class supercarrier. The cheeky shit. Alright, I'm sending in Zarklan's battle group to take out this automated dreadnought, and then I'm sending them up to take out that Infinity Class supercarrier, because that's not good. Alright, here we go. A single massive warship has been discovered patrolling the that system. No life signs can be detected, but is emitting a very strong power signature and appears to be bristling weapon systems. Situation not log has been updated. Yet appear to be responding to hails. A uh, new president, I'll deal with that in a second. We are engaging the enemy. Which will be in a moment. Let's go. <laughs> Once it auto saves. Maybe again in a second. Bloody hell. There we go. Oh, the first shot has been fired. And I immediately took losses. This thing is not playing around. But neither are we. Here we go. I think I lost a battleship. But yeah, that's fine. Admiral gains trade. good -o. Dreadnought disabled. We have managed to disable the automated dreadnought in the every system. Despite the punishment taken from our ships, the structural integrity of the warship's massive hull remains largely intact. Our boarding parties found the modified remains of the dreadnought's aiding crew still manning their stations. Before expiring, they activate some sort of automated patrol mode, which the limited shipboard AI has been locked in for the last 7.8 million years. Although it would take an incredible amount of resources, some of our engineers believe that the dreadnought can be restored and put back into service in our fleet to make a powerful flagship. Situation sure, let's has been get this affected. underway. Meanwhile, you get in an intercept course now. The United Rebel Front has finished repairing the Dyson Sphere, apparently. I see, that's giving them a lot of power. Huh. Regenerating Molluscoy. Just as reports on Gauss Post seem to be dying down, claims have emerged that a third version of the creature has been found in a sparsely inhabited region on Skylar. Just like the other two versions, the creature has been described as a tall mammalian with bioelectrical abilities and can't seem to be found outside of local tales. Our government officials know that these settings began shortly after the creature's rise in popularity among our public, and it's very unlikely for them to have any basis in reality. Time was hell, I guess. Ah, the elusive Carcosa is back. The sightings we dismissed on Earth have been steadily growing in number and now spread to other planets in our territory. Our communications channel has been bombarded reports of the Carcosa's supposed location, but when reviewed, no two descriptions match. A metaphorical gold fever has gripped our population as more paradoxical nature of this creature becomes steadily more apparent. Something has to be done about this and quickly. Uh huh. For four months. Alright. Four months, let's properly get this done. The matter of this mythical being being 
has put has to be put to rest once and for all before something drastic occurs. Our scientists have prepared several special projects to investigate the most critical sightings. Situation log has been updated. All right, updated. so track all on map. Let's see, and they're all around our space. It looks like starting one over here. A skill two or higher. All right, who's the best for the job? Uh, do 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 do. do. Level one, level two. There you go, you can start then. And we have a gateway construction in Blue Hawk. Fantastic. Oh, looks like Zark Clan's battle group is closing in. What are your defenses, Sankili? 255. Alright, Zark Clans, you need to get in there now. Hopefully, before they invade. Come on. Setting course for Plov, engaging. Alright, here we go. We've caught them. System survey concluded. We've lost one of our destroyers, but we are engaging their fleet well enough. Where's the Eternity on here. Oh, the Eternity is down! I repeat, the Eternity is down! Cost us, but we did it. There we go. We need some repairing to do and some reinforcing when the option becomes available again. But a job well done indeed. Seems we've got ourselves a new tradition as well, which gives us what? Uh, some more research. Two more of that, and we can finish our ascension perk. So, teachings of explorers. The Unity Acros crew is reporting that they found something spectacular on this world. On the surface lies traces of an explorative expedition of another civilization left behind are some well preserved documents and artifacts. The proposed action by Chief Science Officer Gordon Tanner is to send the text findings to our home office for translation. There is also a possibility to sell off to a private investor. Uh, let's have them translated, sure. What does that give us to do? Four months? Sure, let's quickly do it. And while that's going on, research the other one. Good oh. <laughs> It's like Zark Clan's battle group doesn't need to interfere in this one. The Sankhili have it handled. 1.1k, that's the strongest suite they've had in a while. They are slowly getting there. If you know they don't get interrupted by attacks from the bloody URF. After many weeks of study, our expert linguists have unearthed the meaning behind the documents found on uh, Ephrippa 7. The documents. Yes, we like to turn our deal. Go away. The documents were philosophical ponderings of a famous scholar known only as Talisa the Teller of Tales. Her teachings have provided us with much insight on how to bear gain political results by replying at yeah. Alright. That's a new edict. Alien Mural. While conducting su surface scans of Evripa 1, some of Gordon Tan and the crew of UNC Acro discovered what appears to be an artificially covered slab of rock covered in alien writing. They have not detected any other signs of alien activity on the planet and Exactly how this mural came to be here is a, a mystery. Alright, so... The situation log has been updated. Sure, let's go. Science officer Gordon Tanner has managed to partially translate the alien mural. It is a memorial to an extinct alien race that once maintained a small interstellar empire in this region of the galaxy. They were apparently exterminated by the creators of the mural, a fact they seem to regret. Given the mural has been dead to the excess of 300 million years old, it's likely that the creators are also extinct by now. Perhaps most interesting of all is the material that the mural is made of. Despite its age, it is in remarkably good condition. Hmm. Seems the young guy have managed to finish the interstellar assembly as well. Very nice. Although our scientists will continue to examine the data on the hunts for the elusive carcassa, it appears the trail has gone cold. Disappointing conclusion. Breakthrough! Eureka! Just as we thought, just as we thought our efforts to identify the nature of the use of Karkos had amounted to nothing, a new lead has granted us vital insight. A young researcher on Gauss the Pask recently came forward with a new theory 
of theirs based on the observer effect. This theory supposes the animal's existence to be extra dimensional, leading to an extraordinary conclusion. The animal possesses the ability to manipulate information about itself, defining its own existence and making it extremely difficult to identify and capture. It is, in essence, the first living example of a mimetic being ever found by the UNSC. Nice. Mimetic Overlord Proposal For the past few months, our scientists have been hard at work analysing the Carcosa's patterns. Though the theory our researcher on Galsaposk delivered was uniquely insightful, it was by no means comprehensive and a lot of work is still required to fully understand the animal's capabilities. But nevertheless, our scientists have had a recent breakthrough. Though we cannot stop the Carcosa from modifying its own characteristics, it can not stop others from doing so either. Our top experts believe we might be able to catch the specimen by using quantum computations to change it faster than it can change itself, thereby stabilizing it in observable form. The process is both highly experimental and resource intensive, but the potential knowledge we could garner from this creature may well be worth it. Uh, what's the energy crest minus 40? Until the special project is done. Situation log has I can afford updated. that. Uh, situation log research go for it and that brings us to 2481 two more episodes and so starts the end game crisis end of episode after next I will put in that command to get the ball rolling on time so we got a we got a whole ass. I'm currently trying to build up the alloys required to build our neutron sweep, our Athens class. And once that is done, I'm going to re try and just pump as many ships as I can in an episode. The home fleet is as powerful as probably going to be. It's 106k, so that's all about ready to go. Omega 2, 66. Star Clans Battle Group, 66. Sierra 29, Terminus 32, Reclamation 33. Uh, I'm going to need to get those numbers up, so I'll just probably start focusing down on uh, Omega 2 next up, where the Infinity is chilling out. That would be the smart thing to do. Gateway Station is currently upgrading as well. Get me some more defenses going. Anchor 5 now has a brand new Super Mac gun over here as well, so that's now 41k. That's a pretty defensive station right there. Soul Station's at 30 itself. Might need to add a couple more to it as we go. And of course, our impromptu or the URF once again. Yeah, I mean, we can deal with this pretty easily. I'm just going to send Dark Clans Balagro to deal with their fleets and then leave them to it again. I mean, we've taken out the Automated Dreadnought. So that is currently soon to be in our control, which will add a extra, an extra massively powerful ship to our own arsenal. <sighs> and currently, Galactic Community... Then a floor appeal or cooperative research channels are opposing it, but it looks like they might be able to get that through. Technology, we've got an improvement to our shield generators, we have capacity and repair dreadnought is taking precedence over the hull points. So, two episodes. Two episodes until shit really hits the fan. Uh, until then, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Tara.